The legends that surround the Wild West's environment include tales of gunfights, outlaws, and deaths that remain a mystery. One name sticks out among the legendary figures of this time period, Johnny Ringo. His life and death are shrouded in mystery, despite his notoriety as a violent criminal. Is it possible that he took his own life, or was he murdered? Who was it that pulled the trigger in the end? In this video, we dive into the mysterious circumstances surrounding Johnny Ringo's passing in an effort to solve one of the Wild West's longest standing and most perplexing unsolved mysteries. In the year 1850, Johnny Ringo, the fifth and youngest of five children, was born in the state of Indiana. During the height of the gold rush, his family followed the herd to California, expecting they too would become filthy rich. However, things were not easy for the Ringo family because Johnny's father went away when Johnny was still a little child. This made life challenging for the Ringos. Ringo's life was irrevocably altered as a result of this enormous loss, and there is considerable speculation that it was a contributing factor in his later spiral into criminal activity. Ringo, who was having trouble identifying his place in the world, experimented with a variety of careers, including farming, mining, and even acting at one point. On the other hand, Ringo did not find the work he was meant to do until he realized he had a natural ability with a firearm. His remarkable marksmanship immediately earned him a reputation as a sniper, a skill that would serve him well in his following endeavors in criminal activity. His reputation as a sharpshooter served him well in his subsequent criminal endeavors. Ringo uprooted his life and moved to Mason County, Texas in the year 1869, leaving his family behind in California. There, he developed a bond with Scott Cooley, who had previously served with the Texas Rangers and was rancher Tim Williamson's adoptive son. Ringo's decision to live a life of crime led to his involvement in the bloody struggle that came to be known as the Mason County War. This bloody conflict broke out after two American burglars were lynched by a crowd in Germany, and it escalated when a German farmer shot and killed Tim Williamson. Ringo and Cooley's assistants orchestrated an ongoing campaign of terror directed at their competitors. Ringo's involvement in the slaying of James Cheney was one of the many people who lost their lives as a direct result of the violence that occurred during this time period. After some time, Cooley and Ringo were arrested for the murder of Charlie Batter, but with the assistance of their friends and acquaintances, they were able to evade capture. Despite the fact that the fight came to an end in November 1876, after countless casualties, including what is thought to be the death of Cooley and Ringo's captivity, Ringo's voyage did not end there. After that, he became a lawman in the town of Loyal Valley, Texas, before eventually focusing his sights on the state of Arizona. Ringo came to Cochise County, Arizona Territory in January 1877, accompanied by his friend Joseph Graves Olney, who went by the moniker Joe Hill throughout his time in the territory. Ringo first met Sam Purdy, the editor of the Tombstone Epitaph, in Tombstone, Arizona. Sam Purdy was the editor of the Tombstone Epitaph. Purdy would later describe a chat with Ringo, in which the outlaw shared his conviction that the violent conclusion to his life was drawing near. Ringo stated that he was running out of time, saying that he could live for a few more years or perhaps for a handful of days more. Ringo was a member of the band The Beatles. His reputation in Tombstone portrayed a picture of a person with a fiery temper, and the newspapers in the area sometimes referred to him as Ringold. Ringo referred to himself as a speculator when he entered his information into the Cochise County Great Register in the year 1882. However, the fact that he was involved in criminal activities and that he was associated with the Cochise County Cowboys, a group of outlaws with just a tenuous connection to one another, continued to raise concerns. On January 17, 1882, Ringo found himself in a furious encounter with another legendary person from the Wild West, who went by the name of Doc Holliday. As a result of the event, both of them were taken into custody by Chief James Flynn of the Tombstone Police Department for carrying weapons within the city limits. After Ringo and Holliday had been taken into custody, they appeared in front of Judge William H. Stilwell, who fined both of them for their offense. Nevertheless, Ringo's run-ins with the law were far from done at that point. 
Ringo was brought up on charges of a robbery that had taken place in Galeville, and Judge Stilwell was in charge of the case. In the end, Ringo was apprehended again and sentenced to prison on May 20, 1882. According to the historical archives, the Earp brothers had a sneaking suspicion that Ringo was engaged in the ambush that took place on December 28, 1881, targeting Virgil Earp. It is thought that the Earp's efforts to clean up the town of Tombstone were the impetus behind this attack, which severely incapacitated Virgil and left him unable to work. In addition to this, it was speculated that Ringo was involved in the slaying of Morgan Earp on March 18, 1882. This was a theory that was widely held at the time. Morgan was shot and killed in a tombstone bar where he was playing billiards at the time of his death. After his brother Morgan was killed, Wyatt Earp, who was the United States Deputy Marshal at the time, and his crew set out to seek justice. Frank Stilwell, who was allegedly involved in the ambush of Virgil and the death of Morgan, was involved in a confrontation with the federal team, and the gunfight ended in a draw. Following this confrontation, Wyatt Earp and the other crew members began searching for the other persons who were guilty of the attacks. In the midst of this time of violence, Cochise County Sheriff Johnny Bean was given a warrant by a judge in Tucson to target Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and Ringo, who represented 19 other men, the majority of whom were Stillwell's buddies. Wyatt Earp was seen in a gunfight with Curly Bill Brocious, one of Ringo's closest associates, during an event that became known as the Vendetta Ride. Iron Springs, now called Mesquite Springs and located around 20 miles from Tombstone, was the site of this confrontation. Wyatt Earp asserted that a guy called Florentino Cruz had admitted to tracking Morgan's murder and listed Ringo, Stilwell, and Brocious as the individuals responsible for the crime. Cruz was said to have identified Brocious, Ringo, and Stilwell as the killers. However, recent research has raised questions about the veracity of Earp's account. The events that led up to Johnny Ringo's passing became a source of debate and curiosity that has continued for more than a century. His body was found in Turkey Creek Canyon in the vicinity of Tombstone, Arizona, on July 14, 1882. Ringo's death was officially considered a suicide despite the fact that he had been shot in the head. However, the circumstances surrounding his death continue to be the subject of discussion among historians and aficionados alike. In an effort to explain the unexplained circumstances surrounding Johnny Ringo's demise, numerous hypotheses have been proposed. One of these hypotheses attributes Ringo's death to the actions of Wyatt Earp. The supposed statement made by Wyatt Earp in July in Arizona on the shooting of Ringo remains contentious. Since the book I Married Wyatt Earp, which popularized this claim, has since been proven to be a fake, the origin of the remark is a mystery at this point. Despite this, others maintain that Earp had reasons to eliminate Ringo, despite the fact that Earp himself denied the claim in 1896. The Doc Holliday theory proposes that Holliday and not Earp was the individual who was responsible for the death of Ringo. This hypothesis became better known as a result of the movie Tombstone. However, it appears from the court records that Holliday faced theft charges in Colorado when Ringo passed away. In addition, a newspaper report places Holliday nearly 900 kilometers distant from the location of the homicide, which makes it extremely unlikely that he was involved in the crime. The death of Johnny Ringo remains a mystery, with various theories proposed. One suggests that Michael O'Rourke, a gambler with a grudge against Ringo, may have killed him to avenge the death of Brocious. Ringo's life and death continue to captivate Western enthusiasts and historians, but the true circumstances, whether suicide, murder, or a personal vendetta, may forever remain unknown. That's all for today. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos. See you next time.